everybody. Um, I've got another uh, foreground kit. <laughs> um, I, uh, I know I've done a lot of foreground kits on the channel recently. It's just like, I, uh, well, there's a couple of games that I really want to start playing, uh, like in, in particular, uh, Dead Man's Hand and uh, Dracula's America. So uh, I've been kind of focused on um, building like a, a Western table. Um, so, but this is a really cool kit. <laughs> the, um, I just, I love this, um, this Curse of Dead Man's Hand, uh, series that Foreground did. And then they're just kind of like ghost town buildings, like, um, you know, ruined, um, old, old looking, like ghost town, Western ghost town buildings. And then they're, they're really, really nice. Like I was kind of blown away by the level of detail, uh, on, on this kit. Like there's all kinds of little details, like blasted out little bits. And, um, they, they give you like tar paper roofs and, uh, it's just, a, it's a really nice kit. So I'm going to show it off and then, uh, you know, did it, did a good paint job on it. So, um, Anyways, yeah, hopefully um, we're gonna get some uh, some games on the channel soon too. We've been uh, been playing a lot of one page rules, so uh, hopefully we'll start uh, start recording some of those games as soon as we have all of our armies painted and stuff too. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's do another uh, foreground kit. Okay, got another foreground kit. Um, like I don't, I don't want my channel to turn into the foreground channel. <laughs> uh, foreground though, if you have any kits that you want to send me to review, let me know, because I love these. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, okay, this is just, it's a really cool kit. I think it's just, I'm just loving these, like putting these together. I think they're so cool. Um, so yeah, it is going to be the foreground channel for a little while. But, um, this is, I just, I, I really like these, um, like ruined kind of building kits that they did. I just think they look super cool. Um, I have some stain options. Uh, I, I picked up one of these, um, I was watching Thunder Mesa. Yeah, Thunder Mesa, Model Railroad, their channel, or Dave, Dave on Thunder Mesa, and then he's talking about his stain options and apparently he does the exact same thing that I do which is just mixes his own rubbing alcohol and ink stain um, so I tried those out on here but this is another option is these are just like stain markers and that's this and uh, and then this is uh, my my own stain so it's not penetrating that good um, but uh, I want to give it like give this like a weathered wood look like this looks a little bit too kind of bleached out um, So Anyways, what I'm gonna do before I start putting things together is going I was I'm gonna go around and do Stain so I love this. I love that they give you these like construction paper kind of like tar paper roof things these like shingles these are super cool because um, I, I made my own with like the last the last kit, but um, I just I feel like these are just they're like like the best like quality wise um, as far as MDF kits go out there right now. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna go around and I'm gonna do a stain on these and I'm gonna see if I can get these to kind of take some stain a little better. So these look like they are painted because this is this is raw MDF on this side and then this side, it looks like it was painted and then they cut it with the laser, which isn't a bad look, It but it has like kind of that bleached out wood look. So just see if I can kind of stain this a little bit. And then keeping these on the, the sprues will help 
with uh, warping and stuff too. So the rubbing alcohol, it, it also um, is going to prevent warping because um, that doesn't look bad at all. Um, the rubbing alcohol sort of penetrates and then it, um, it, it, it evaporates really quickly and basically water will make wood warp way more than uh, like alcohol or oil or lacquer any kind of thing that kind of seeps into the pores instead of um, well water seeps into the pores too but I'm rambling so anyways this is what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna go around and stain everything before I start even putting anything together <clears throat> okay so I went around and stained everything um, I uh, I tried this on some of the the stuff that's already painted and it's just not it's not penetrating very well um, it works fine on the uh, like the sort of raw MDF uh, but so I'll, sh I'll just show you what that looks like I think that this could be good for like picking out individual boards, you know, to kind of like break out, break up the, um, so that they don't just all look the same and kind of create some, uh, some variation, but it doesn't really penetrate into their so good because it's already painted, right? But it does look, I mean, it looks pretty good. So, um, but the, the the important thing is that none of this is warping uh so my my stain is my stain is working so so this is just a lot easier way to just slop on a whole bunch of stain all over um and then this is just it's just mostly rubbing alcohol and then a little bit you know a, a little bit of ink so nothing is warping but i can always just come back later it, that's this is mostly just to get some kind of color down and then before i even start gluing things up but uh but yeah it's not penetrating that well so i think i'm gonna have to stick to paint but anyways okay so nothing is warping too much a little tiny bit but um not not in a bad way and uh, another thing that you can do too, like you can see like a big chunky piece like this, it's kind of warping a little tiny bit. Not enough where it'll actually um, throw things off later, but I can, I can hit the other side with stain as well. And then that will, um, that'll help, like it'll dry evenly on both sides. And, um, that will, it is, so it won't contract, it won't pull in on itself as it's uh, in one direction instead of the other while it's drying. So, okay. So anyways, yeah, I'm gonna start gluing things up. Okay, organized chaos. Um, so I got everything stained um, and then I, you know, it's mostly just focusing on the side with the, um, the laser details because I didn't really stain both sides of something unless it was warping, um, because the, uh, the foreground kits, um, they, they're going to have the, um, the laser details on, on both sides. So they, they generally, if they have playable interiors, then they, they aren't just going to have one side with details, you know, like uh, cut wood and stuff. It's going to be on both sides. So that's another nice little detail with these kits. But, uh, but yeah, I'm going to start um, putting stuff together. Um, another thing that showed up finally was my uh, black super glue. Because um, I mixed up some black paint and PVA glue before. To, uh, to glue these together and stuff came apart. <laughs> it wasn't as strong as I was hoping. 
So I, hopefully the black super glue will do a better job and then it'll just look like some pitch or like tar or something, you know, like some weathering mold, I don't know, whatever. Um, something period specific that would go with wood because I'm gonna try and just weather these and stain them instead of really painting, painting. Um, I want to do like broken paint on top of wood stain. So anyways, yeah, I'm going to start putting things together and gluing stuff up. I'm going to be using my magnet glue up tray too. Definitely don't need these, <laughs> but it's nice to have. They uh, just keeps everything like lined up and it's a little bit awkward to use, but it's not that bad. But yeah, the, uh, the glue up tray, it's one of those optional upgrade things. It's just really nice. Uh, these guys too. Definitely recommend grabbing some of these guys, these little uh, binder clip things. They do a great job of keeping stuff, whether, you, whether you're doing this with like PVA glue or super glue like I'm doing, uh, just does a great job of keeping everything in place until it's done curing. Okay, so uh, glue up is all done. Um, I just wanted to show you guys some of the like level of detail on this kit. Like, so okay, we've got like little doors, you know, that swing open and closed. But um, just these like door frames alone are uh, like multiple parts. Like, where's the, where's the door frames? Um, yeah, here's, here's like the, the door frame. You see all of the parts and like steps that go into just putting the, the little doors in. I mean, there's even parts on these, like where they cut all the way through. It's hard to see. They cut all the way through with the laser on some parts and it's still connected. Like I thought that was supposed to break out or something. It's just to show that the, like the internal, um, like wood, the boards on that side, because it has the laser on, you know, the, the laser detailed interiors and exteriors. So I really feel like they foreground, like they're just making like the best MDF kits right now um so food, i you know i talked about it before but they're like they're just the best to me so anyways um yeah time to do some painting um so i do i do have like an idea like okay so in, and then one more thing like look at these uh these paper cutouts they already have some little i didn't put these on these little they're just uh, depressions. So they have something that goes around and cuts and then something that sort of just engraves little depressions or, uh, and then like it already has a little slit for this like roof piece to go on. So, okay, yeah, glue up is done. If you if you are gonna do some MBF kits, I these, this is great. This glue up tray, I use it all the time uh, and then, get yourself some binder clips, like 
do it and at least get like some rubber bands or something. And then this stuff is great. This uh, this black super glue, I'm a, I'm a big fan now. So, okay, let's do some painting. Um, all right, so first thing that I wanna do, I'm going to get everything ready to paint. Okay, so first off, um, you can see that the, the stain stuff didn't really penetrate that well into, I mean, this is painted. And it's also MDF, which is not, it's like a wood product. It's like sawdust and then plastic binder, like some kinds of weird chemicals that they put in MDF. But, um, <clears throat> so I wanna see if I can just come in back in with the, the stain and kind of get more of a, um, like an aged, um, rotten, dirty wood look. Um, and then this is, this, this piece, it fits under, it just kind of like pops in under here. And, uh, you're, you're not supposed to glue this up because you can take it on or off depending on how you're setting up your little town. Um, so, okay, so that's not penetrating, right? But what I can do is I can take these pigments um, and then put them on there. Uh, just got some, some black uh, pigments. Um, so I'm just gonna go in and kind of do pigments on there um, after I've put the so the rubbing alcohol is gonna kind of be like the binder. That's gonna be the thing that like makes the, the pigment stick. Um, so it's not gonna, it's gonna be a, like a kind of subtle effect, but I just wanna get like a certain kind of like rotten, you know, old wood look going on. So that, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go around on this, and I did wanna use this as like my test piece because it's not really gonna be visible too much. Um, and then this is just a makeup brush, you know, kind of using it how it's intended to, for uh, putting down pigments. These are have like super, super soft bristles. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, I'm gonna do it on the bottom here, on this this part too. Uh, and then some of this stuff is gonna get painted, uh, like especially like under awnings and things like that where it would be a little bit protected. But okay, so yeah, I'm gonna go around and do that kind of all over on these guys first. Okay, so I, uh, hit this again with the stain and then I put pigments on it and then I put more uh, rubbing alcohol and or more stain on top of that <clears throat> so that's gonna kind of seal those pigments down I'm still gonna need to do like some varnish or something later but that's kind of the look that I'm going for for the like floorboards down here so now or the the, the rotten wood at the bottom. And uh, so what I'm gonna do now though, is I'm gonna come in while this is still a little bit wet um, and I'm gonna do an overbrush of this uh, uh, barn wood color. And um, so, but I'm gonna keep it, um, I'm gonna keep it on the, the top part because I want the, um, uh, <clears throat> I want, I want this to look like the rain and mud and all that and dirt is coming and collecting down here. And then, uh, I want the top to look like it's kind of, uh, sun, sun worn, you know, and like weathered. So I'm just going to kind of come around and like I especially want to get these spots with the laser, like where the um, 
anything that kind of stands out where there's like high contrast where I don't want it. <laughs> and I'm just going to kind of drag it down like this. Try not to get it in my little cracks, um, but just do a little, a little overbrush on the, the top part. But I want to get like these hard edges where the the laser burns are where I don't want them. Like on these window sills and stuff. But just do a little a little overbrush on the top. But you can see how this part looks compared to, to this. So that's more of the this is more of the look that I'm going for. And it's not painted painted it's it's kind of just uh, uh, more of an overbrush than anything else and I can come back in and put more stain on but like the the um, the because it's kind of wet this the um, that's gonna soften out the the overbrush dry brush but that's like that's like more the, the look that I'm going for that compared to all right I'm gonna go around and do the rest of this so as I'm going around doing all these uh, I'm finding that the the flat uh, using a flat works a lot better for just getting into these little like nooks and crannies and stuff. So I'm still just kind of overbrushing. Like I don't want to put down thick paint, but I do want to cover up like laser burns and then make it look like one consistent piece of wood. And then I, I do, went ahead and dry brushed on here too. Not sure how I feel about that. I might, I might do something later with that. Um, but I've committed, so. <laughs> but you can you can totally dry brush with a with a flat too. You just try to you know go like uh, that. Kind of catch the edges and stuff. I feel about that. I'm gonna do something different with that later. But uh, but yeah, I mean, definitely has a cool, like old um, aged wood look that I dig. Okay, so the wood is looking nice and weathered, kind of like how I want it to. Um, so now what I think I'm going to do is uh, I want to do some like chipping paint. Uh, so I want to keep this all looking dirty and dingy down here. And then I want some chipping paint, like especially like under these awnings and stuff up here. Um, so I'll just start on this side. So I've got this uh, chalky finish paint and I think it's going to make a nice sort of whitewash look. Ooh, that doesn't look right. Probably just needs to be mixed up. Yeah. I want it to look more like that. <laughs> Okay. Right, that's better. Um, so what I'm going to use is a, a stipple brush. So this is just a tough like hog, hog's hair brush. Um, and then what I do is I just kind of dab off a little bit and then go like that on the top. And then that's gonna look like a like a 
chipped chip paint up here. Alternatively, what you could use too is something like a like a packing a piece of packing foam. Uh, show you what that looks like. Kind of dab it off until you get that spongy texture, and then like. that on the top. And if you don't like this part, you know, you don't like it, <laughs> the painting part. Uh, personally, like this is my favorite part is the painting. So, you know, if you just want to put together the kit, like it is like pre-painted. I just feel like I, I enjoy the painting. So anyways, yeah. Gonna go around and do lots of chipped paint all over. All right, so I got a kind of chip paint look going along, going on on the side. Um, I like how, you know, it definitely looks like an old whitewash, like a chipped whitewash. Um, so now I think I'm gonna go ahead and fix this, uh, this roof part. And um, so I just wanna try these uh, pigments on here and see what that does, what that looks like. Yeah, that's okay. I think what I might do is just use this uh, stipple brush again with some some black and then just go back in there because I kind of I like the edges. The edges look fine. Um, I just want to kind of sort of make it look like some tar paper. Um, give the roof um, more of like a tar paper look uh, so I'm just gonna I think I'm just gonna come in back in with some black on top of there all right more more craft paint And if I mix a little gray in there, that's totally fine. Not a big deal. Just see how that looks. Yeah. It's sort of a dark gray anyways. So the black looks pretty good in there. more like a um, like a tar paper all right yeah um, definitely I definitely like that better. I think that looks much better as like a tar paper kind of roof look. Um, the the sponge seems to work a lot better. So, um, but it definitely has a nice like tar paper look to it. Um, <clears throat> so, anyways, oops, got some that color on there. Yeah, uh, all right, I'm just gonna
finish up with this and I will post some pictures of what the uh, what the finished model looks like uh, yeah so thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one take care of yourselves